think the video is going now. Hello everyone. Uh, so this would be a video on uh, thermodynamics. Um, basically what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to recap what happened uh, in class the other day. And uh, I say this is thermodynamics because uh, the class prior to that, when I asked the students like, uh, do they not understand thermodynamics? Do they fear thermodynamics? It's not clear. So many of them put their hands up. So then uh, that means that we should uh, take more care here. Um, because it, it basically is, it, it describes our, uh, <laughs> describes our existence actually. So what I will do is I'll take you through how the conversation with the students happened. Uh, but from my side, um, when I'm uh, doing this section, so my outcome here is that what I'm looking for is whether you understand what is the core identity of everything. It could be animate things, inanimate things, uh, biotic things, abiotic things. What is our core identity? How do we identify ourselves? That is one thing. So then if you come up with what it is, what is identity, then I would like to have you think about it and in depth and get to appreciate it uh, about what that identity is and what are its components and what it is capable of doing. So that is one thing. The second thing is whenever we say thermodynamics, most of the students and most of the researchers and sometimes in the industry also, they say, hey, uh, how is this relevant to anything? How, how, how can this be relevant to real world? So then um, the way to approach this is whenever we talk about different thermodynamic properties or you would say components like enthalpy, entropy, uh, work, internal energy. So then you should be able to identify physical properties, mechanical properties, thermal properties in all of this. Like let's say internal pressure, internal volume, thermal expansion coefficient, heat capacity, thermal conductivity, uh, mechanical moduli, mechanical compliance, so viscosity. So you should be able to identify these in thermodynamics so that then you will be able to tell that why this particular component of thermodynamics is relevant because it contains these particular properties inside them. So you get the point. So if you understand the components and if you're able to identify the physical, the real world properties inside these components, then obviously the, it, it makes sense that it's related to the real world. So I'll get to that a little bit later. So basically these are my two objectives so, that I have. So now going back to my first objective, so I just started off uh, conversing with the students and uh, so basically the question was which I've already uh, asked a few, a few seconds ago. So what is the identity? What is the core identity of animate, inanimate, biotic, abiotic things, whether it's in the macroscopic scale, microscopic scale, nanoscopic scale, subatomic scale. So then, uh, so this question went around and a student uh, thought about it and uh, she came up with, I think the core identity is, is energy. When we talk about ourselves, we usually say what energy, what am I, uh, at what activity I am at or, or at what energetic state I am at. So that's how a student arrived at this uh, identity as energy. 
so if this core identity is energy of all things then I think the next uh, thought process is what exactly is this energy because we use it um, in all kinds of context here so then uh, next question that went around was um, what is this energy so then um, we get to think about it right and then a student arrived at uh, something like this he said um, it is the ability it is something which has the ability it is it is it is that which has the ability to do work so ability to do work and that's a great start right so uh, that's the first thing that actually comes to everybody's mind because even though it goes against our nature because work is very very orderly and even though it goes against our nature somehow when we say what what we should be doing or what our identity is or what energy would be so it's funny that we always say that it is the orderly thing first so the orderly thing that came out first from a student was that it's the ability to do work so it is some burst that has the ability to do work it is something that is there already in all of us that has the ability to do work you can you can keep improvising on this so then work immediately becomes like i said orderly now yes because work is orderly because you whenever you tend to do something you have a common goal and when you have a common goal you always try to work in unison and there is a uniformity associated with it so when you say unison uniformity there is an order associated with it so that is how work typically is orderly because you always are looking for an end result that you want to achieve something out there so once the student picked up on the orderly then uh, the other side of orderly is disorderly or some people use the word randomness uh, or I just like to say that it is just simply getting dispersed um, so then this simply getting dispersed has no direction and it, it at times may not have a driving force so it, it just disperses it just disperses because it can arrive at different configurations it can it can occupy more arrangements why because it just can it has the mobility it can move so it can take different arrangements so that basically is dispersion so it's like um, you can have both energy as well as matter both getting dispersed so what i would like to do at this point is uh, that the student should uh, think for certain examples where you will have both energy just being dispersed and matter also just being dispersed in a very disordered fashion in a disordered fashion there is no direction to it correct and this dispersion can happen internally that energy can just get dispersed within the system it can just keep on rearranging within the system so i brought up another word here system so system is me so it's like system is where we are sort of having certain boundaries and and we could be open or closed systems and so each of us would be like a system and whatever is around us is the environment or the surroundings so thermodynamics always has this system and surroundings because it's a boundary associated between me and the surroundings so what we are talking about here is as soon as the order moved to disorder now it's this disorder is a dispersion inside the system so energy is something 
that has the ability to do work. Energy is something that can just disperse and can rearrange. So then I said, keep going. Then somebody said, energy could be something that can be transferred or transported. So it can move. So since we already said system and surroundings, that it can move in and out of these places. It can be transferred, it can be transported. Agreed? Then it can also be something that can be transformed, where its form can be changed. Like sound can become heat, mechanical can become electric, chemical can become electric, vice versa, any of these, uh, it can be transformed. So then energy can be something that can be transported or transferred and also can be transformed. So this is between the system and when, or when this transferring happens or the transportation happens, it could again be orderly or disorderly that we cannot predict, depends on what we're talking about. And also in the transformation also, it can be orderly and disorderly, like dissipation, like exhaust coming out of vehicles could be disorderly, correct? This is where the transformation of the energy is happening, this combustion that's happening. So now if you put all this together, how does the definition of our identity sound that which, which would be identity, which would be energy? It would sound, I think something like this, I'm going to give it a shot. So it is something that has the, it is, it is a burst or it's a quanta. It has the ability to do work. It has the ability to internally disperse. It has the ability to externally disperse in the form and shape of getting transferred or transported. And this could be orderly or disorderly. And it could also be transformed. So it could change its shape and form. And another important thing, it's always conserved that we are not going to generate or destroy it. So it's, it can be rearranged. So it can be used to do work. It can be dispersed. It can be transferred, transported, or it can, it, or it can be transformed. And in many of these cases, it could be orderly or disorderly. And for all this, the core is, it has a burst. It has something in it. It, is, it has something inherent in it. And that would be the internal energy. And internal energy is something that I just asked the students to think about and it would comprise pretty much everything even if you're talking about uh, electrons, ions, atoms, molecules or even quanta particles. They all have potential energy and kinetic energy. So all this would comprise to give you the internal energy and, and this internal energy which comprises of all these potential energy and kinetic energy from all the different situations of the or I should say from the different components of the system you cannot simply define that as it has something right I mean you cannot simply define energy as it is internal energy so it has these so now if you come to a better definition of energy you would say energy comprises of the position and the movement of all the components that we possess inside the system which has mass momentum and momentum and all of this has the ability to do work ability to disperse inside and rearrange or ability to transport and transform would constitute 
energy. So before I see you tomorrow, um, can we just uh, think about this, uh, reflect on it and see if all the components that you have or, or all the words that you have or the jargon that you have heard in thermodynamics has been included here. So I just started you, started you off with internal energy, then you heard the word work, then you heard the word transport, transfer. So basically system surroundings, it could transfer as heat. You heard the word heat and then you heard dispersion, redistribution. So you heard the word redistribution, rearrangement, entropy. And a combination of internal energy and the work done is enthalpy. So this would be the first thing that you would want to reflect. And when I come to class tomorrow, then again, I'm um, not going to repeat this, but uh, just going to summarize this real fast. And I am going to just go through a small exercise of identifying the properties, like the physical properties in the thermodynamic components. So that's about it. And then uh, I've already talked about the components of internal energy also. So then I will move to what kinds of work are they and then I'm going to move into entropy. That's pretty much how this is going to go. Okay guys, uh, catch you then tomorrow. Yeah, see you. Bye-bye. Good night.